G'day guys, it's Nathan here. Are we on the brink of a mild recession due to the unexpected decrease in productivity and increase in wages? Well, we're gonna dive into the profound analysis of the current economic trends, the housing markets, unprecedented decline, and central banks battle against inflation. The recent decline in productivity at an unprecedented rate, coupled with growing wages, could push the cash rate to nearly 5%. Insights call for a reduction in regulatory hurdles and consideration of proposed industrial reforms. The significant 4.8% drop in productivity was reported as economic growth seemed to wane, with only a 0.2% increase in growth recorded for the first quarter of this year, and the cause an uptick in interest rates that's taking a toll on customer spending and exacerbating the cost of living. Now, a tug-of-war situation arises between the government's aim to stimulate wages and the central bank's efforts to manage inflation. This further complicated by the fact that the decision to increase minimum wages as it could indirectly drive wider pay demands. Sustaining wage growth beyond the current pace would require a corresponding acceleration in productivity. Without this, we risk pushing inflation further, which could ultimately result in a series of rate hikes and potentially push the economy into a mild recession later this year. The Treasurer maintained that the slump in productivity isn't a result of the shift in remote working arrangements during the pandemic. Instead, he argues that the issue was existing before and it would require strategic investment in productivity, including workforce skills and technology adoption. Despite the opposition from businesses against the same job, same pay reform, it emphasised that the recent productivity decline underscores the necessity for focused efforts on productivity, enhancing rather than additional regulations in the workplace. And if you find value in this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button as it does really help out the channel. And a big thank you to all our subscribers for your support inspires us to create more content we hope you enjoy. Now, as we see the real GDP growth slowed to 0.2% in the March quarter, the Treasurer asserts that the sluggish growth is unsurprising given the pressure on household budgets due to rising interest rates and high cost of living. There's also more bad news. Unit labour costs, which reflects pressures on pay, have risen by 7.9% in March. These figures emphasise the mounting challenges faced by central banks. The Reserve Bank Governor still remains optimistic in maintaining that it's still feasible to manage inflation without derailing the economy. It certainly won't be easy though. Some economists suggest that it will be increasingly difficult for the central bank to rein in inflation without a notable slowdown in growth and a spike in unemployment rates. By September, we might see the cash rate hit 4.85%, a tightening that could potentially push the economy into a mild recession later this year. As household disposable income increases due to employment and wage growth, 7% inflation overshadows these gains, resulting in a nearly 5% drop in real income compared to last year. Despite the burden on families, household spending continues to rise marginally. However, as families cut down on discretionary spending, their savings also dwindles, reaching the lowest point we've seen since mid-2008. A glimmer of hope is seen in infrastructure and capital working expenditure, both in the private and public sectors, which could help boost activity in the early part of next year. According to CoreLogic's latest data, regional New South Wales witnessed a 10% fall in house prices over the past year, which is the steepest since the pre-COVID era. This trend of depreciation touched most parts of the region, confirming a 9% decrease in house values. The housing market wasn't alone in the downward spiral, with capital cities experiencing a cool down. Sydney's real estate sector, for instance, saw an 8.2% decrease over the same period. Interestingly, the majority of this depreciation took place from May 2022 to January of 2023, during which the Australian Home Value Index plunged by 8.4%, and this was really during the most substantial rate increases we'd seen in a very long time, which makes sense why property values came down. After an astronomical upsurge in housing prices during the pandemic, peaking at a record in May of 2022, the current market trends indeed is a stark contrast. CoreLogic's head of research, Tim Lawless, highlighted that the regions such as Richmond Tweed and Southern Highlands, which gained popularity during the pandemic, faced the harshest reduction in values. For instance, Byron Bay experienced a significant 22% fall in house values in the last year. According to Tim Lawless, the current trend could be attributed to an increase in migration from these regions to cities 
Sydney. Not necessarily by the disillusion by regional life, but by those who had put off their plans to move during the pandemic hold. While these developments might paint a grim picture, rural properties in West and South New South Wales managed to maintain their values much better. Agricultural markets such as Fair West, Orion and Riverina even saw a slight increase in values over the past year. Despite the overall decrease, Lawless confirmed that the medium dwelling values still surpassed the pre-COVID levels. He also assured homeowners who had held their property for some time that they could still have had substantial equity despite the recent decrease. On the other hand, the rental markets tell a different story. Over the same 12-month period, Australia saw a 9.9% increase in rents, with Sydney recording 13.2% increase. The surge in rents for inner-city apartments, which saw a nearly 20% increase, was largely due to international students returning. Lawless explained that this trend resulted in a supply-demand imbalance with strong demand for rents and limited supply. Although rents in regional New South Wales also rose over the past year, the hike wasn't as significant as the capital cities. Lawless reported a minor increase in rental supply in the region with vacancy rates now at 1.7% from 1.4% a year ago. Despite this increase, most areas in regional New South Wales continue to witness rent increases. While the overall housing values have shown some recovery over the last three months, Lawless warned that the possibility that there could be a dampening, dampening effect on the market due to potential rate increases. As he put it, another rate hike could slow down the market, if not cause prices to fall again, taking the heat out of the real estate market. And at the fifth annual Morgan Stanley Australian Summit, a key focus of the discussion was around the challenges in the real estate sector brought on by a series of rate hikes by the Reserve Bank of Australia. These monetary policy actions aimed at curbing high inflation levels, which have been unseen in the past 30 years, have consequently introduced a layer of uncertainty into the real estate market, leading to a decrease in investor activity. Over the past year or so, 12 rate rises have been recorded by the Reserve Bank, elevating the official cash rate to 4.1%. This has prompted several market analysts to revise their future rate predictions in an upwards direction. One of the critical concerns highlighted during the summit was the adverse environment created by these constant rate hikes. Suggestions were made towards achieving a peak rate sooner, considering the observable trend of rates remaining unsettled. Further compounding the issue are various events around uh, North America and Europe, which is creating turbulence and has added a perceived riskiness in the real estate landscape. A significant part of the summit discussions revolved around the panel titled Higher Interest Rates for Longer, the New Paradigm for Interest Rates and Capitalization Rates. Acknowledging the clear impacts of rate increases on real estate sectors and investment returns, the panel discussed how these effects might differ across various sectors. The outlook for flat valuations in the industrial sector and potential widening of capitalization rates was explored, yet the panel remained optimistic for listed real estate groups in the forthcoming reporting period. And remember to like, share and subscribe to stay informed with all the latest property and finance news. The real estate sector has undoubtedly felt the impact of steep interest rate hikes, inflation leading to investment slowdown and financial difficulties for some entities. However, the consensus remains that the long-term outlook still remains positive given the stable economy and potential for robust future investments. It's also noted that real estate assets such as office buildings in Sydney and Melbourne continue to be highly desirable on the global scale. The panel agreed that there's significant capital ready for deployment once interest rates reach their peak. Thus, even while the real estate sector is weathering a period of turbulence due to aggressive interest rate hikes, optimism for favorable long-term outlooks is still maintained. And did you know here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers and deal with people Australia-wide. So if you need assistance, we can help. Give us a call on 1300 08065 or visit our website, huntergalloway.com.au. We'd love to help. And guys, as always, thanks for watching.